Okay, so this is open meta analysis, or open meta analyst actually. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is import a CSV file, which is going to be exactly the uh, same file that I used in R to do the hippocampus uh, total amount. So first thing you need to do is look at what type of data you have. Is it a proportion data? No, it's the mean hippocampal size uh, with post-traumatic stress disorder or without post-traumatic stress disorder. So it's a mean set of data. So I'm going to click on that. If it was based on regression uh, models, you click on regression coefficients. If it's proportions, you proportion models. Uh, if it's generic effect size, then you pick on this theta or standard uh, error. If it's diagnostic, so true, positive, false, negatives, and you pick on that one. Um, actually, it's mean. So there's two groups per study. So I'm comparing mean one against mean two. So the mean for the PTSD against the mean for the people who've not got PTSD. Right, so metric is the mean difference, which is the default. Uh, we could do standardized mean differences, but let's not. Go to next. What's the name of the outcome variable? Um, so this is the volume. Oops. Next, it's a CSV file. Uh, it was CSV exported. Um, okay. Let's, right. Has columns. I need to select the CSV file. Now I've got mine in the downloads folder. You will have yours wherever you have it stored. And I press open. So now it's very awkward within this window. Yes, that's the particular CSV. It is downloaded from Windows. That's all good. I need to get to the bottom of that page to click on OK. Quote character, download, all good. But I can't get to the bottom of the page to click the OK button. So let's start this higher up. File, import CSV, and mean difference, outcome name is volume. Well, it's hippocampal volume. Hippocampal volume. Next. Select the CSV file, total hippocampus, open. Now I can hit the finish button, which I couldn't get to before. Duplicate study names not allowed. Okay, that's a problem. Uh, so let's go back and reopen uh, that hippocampus file. Always the fun. So what you've got here is two studies that have been done by exactly the same group. What you want to do is merge uh, the study name and the year to be a, the name of the study. <coughs> so, I'm going to do it by hand because there's only a few, otherwise I'd use concatenation. So that will be 202, Rubin, 2015, born 201, Levi, Gigi, 2014, born 2008, and dad, 2006, Fenner, Steve, 2002, which is 
Beginning to wonder whether why I didn't do the concatenation, but then I'd have to create new columns and then delete them, and it's just a pain. Anyway, right, done. Save hippocampus. Go back to my meta analysis. Let's go back again. Import CSV. Means, mean differences. Yeah. Volume. Next. It's from Excel. Uh, you've got to pick the file first. Title Hippocampus. Comes from Excel. Finish. Now it downloads all of the data. So it's got, hopefully, it's got group A and group A mean. So let's look at the data that I had to start with. So this is the mean of the experimental. Standard error of the experimental. Uh, number in the experimental. Got the number in the control. I've got the standards in the control. And I've got the uh, number in the control. So has it done this correctly? Uh, no. It's done it completely and utterly wrong. I love life. <sighs> okay, if I can right. So it wants the data in a completely different set, different order. Fantastic. So what I'm going to do is change all those orders and then resave it. Next. So temporarily I'm going to put it out the way. So the order that I need them in is the number in the first group. So this is this column here. Then next I need the mean of the first group. And then I need the standard deviation of the first group. Now what I have is the standard error of the first group. So to calculate the standard deviation of that first group, so standard deviation. Actually, no, I think they are standard deviations. The standard deviations of the experimental group. This is SE, not standard error. Good. That's fine. Now I need the number of the second group, which is the control in this case. Mean of the second group. Oops. And the standard deviation of the second group. I need to delete that. Now I've got it in the right format and I'm going to save this as total hippocampus for open meta. Because it needs it in a different format. Bingo. I can close that. I go back and hopefully the last time I can import this thing. Mean differences. Here go campus volume. Next, select the file. From that one, CSV. Finish. Right, n mean things. Now it tells you what the mean difference is. It tells you what the lower uh, conf lower confidence interval is for the mean difference, and the upper confidence interval for the mean difference from the different papers. 
So now I can do the actual plot and analysis I want to do. So if I want to do the meta-analysis, I've got to decide whether I want to have continuous random effects or effects or fixed effects, inverse variance. Um, doesn't really matter uh, in this particular case. So let's leave it as continuous random. You're going to do a forest plot. They're going to be labeled with the study name and everything else is going to be default. It will save the image to, I want to save it to where I am now, download. I'll call it forest one and then press OK. So now I can see the weights, a summary of the meta-analysis and I get my forest plot. Which if I go back to this directory I can see forest.png. Now at the bottom here you've got this I squared thing which is 62.5% with probability of less than 0.001. So this is a reasonable um, model because you've got random and taken into account random effect. If I'd got the fixed effects model then this would probably be a problem. So the fixed effects model assumes that all of the sets of data are taken from the same population and you're just getting slightly different samples from each other with a bit of variation. The random effects model is a more complicated model which takes into account variation between each of the different studies which is called their heterogeneity and the I squared is a measure of the heterogeneity. So you've used, in this case, a model which takes into account heterogeneity, so it's all fine. If the value is 50% or lower, then you can use the uh, fixed effects model and you don't need to have the random effects model. The key thing about your forest plot is this is the mean difference. So the mean difference is definitely negative. This study, these studies which have positive uh, differences in the volume between those with PTSD and those without, they are not representative. Zero is the no effect line, as in there's no difference between the control group and the experimental group, and this is the experiment, true experimental difference for that particular study for that particular question. Right, back in meta-analysis, what else can we do? You can do that. So it's got 95% confidence intervals, you could change these. I'm just looking to see if it has the possibility so it allows you to do only forest plots just looking if it allows you to do funnel plots as well and the answer to that would be no doesn't allow you to do um, funnel plots as well, which is a bit of an inconvenience. 